In this tutorial concerning Reaper preferences, we try to understand what the audio tab settings are for. There are several options which allow the covered management of the audio interface drivers and also to assign a label to each input or output that allows you to more easily recognize which input or output you are using. As always, if this type of video is useful to you, I ask you to write it down below in the comments telling your experience, put a like and share it with other users. Close audio device when stopped and application is inactive. Checked by default, this box allows the Reaper to release the audio interface to other audio applications when it's stopped and its window is not the active one. So, these applications work without problems, for instance browsing YouTube rather than an MP3 player, etc. By deactivating this option, Reaper, in whatever status is, has the exclusive right access to the audio interface and doesn't allow other applications to use it. I run full bar to show you what happens. When playing, it returns an error and doesn't work. This box, close audio device when inactive and tracks are record armed, is active only when the parent one is active as well. By checking it, Reaper releases the use of the audio interface to other applications, even when a track is armed in record. Not by ticking it, indeed, Reaper considers the audio interface as its exclusive use, because a track armed in record potentially is about to be used, therefore it has priority. The following option, close audio device when inactive and rewire devices are open, tells Reaper to ignore if the devices connected in rewire are open. In this case, I connect through the loop and then Reaper's output go to FL and then return to Reaper. If Reaper is inactive, for instance in the background, and another audio or video application is opened, it can use the audio interface. Hey baby, what's up? I got a bag. I got a boogie. Yeah. I got a bear. Regardless of whether or not other apps are open in Rewire, as you have seen. Close audio device when stop and active, less responsive. If activated, Reaper loses the exclusive use of the audio interface when it's stopped, regardless of whether it is in the foreground or not, and any other application can use the interface without problems. Hey baby, what's up? I got a bag. Conversely, if this box is not checked, you may encounter problems of the type illustrated here. Warn when unable to open audio devices. The first of three troubleshooting functions, selected by default, if Reaper finds the audio interface occupied by another application, a warning window appears. If you don't check it, however, there is no warning, but you may have operating issues without knowing why and maybe waste time looking for the cause somewhere and then discover that it was enough to close the responsible application. Warn when unable to open MIDI devices. Second troubleshooting function. In case a MIDI device has problems, Reaper notifies you via window. Disabling this function, even when a MIDI device, keyboard, controller has problems, you will not be warned. Warn when enable MIDI devices are not present. Last troubleshooting function, similar to the previous one and enabled by default. If any of the enabled MIDI devices is not connected or is turned off, you will be notified via a window. To show you, I go to MIDI device, I enable one of the keyboards that's not connected to the computer. Here is Reaper's warning. By deactivating this option, however, and repeating the operations to show you the behavior, Reaper no longer warns. I recommend keeping these settings as default. Tiny fade out on playback stop, tiny fade in on playback start. Both are active by default. 
They are used respectively for when you go to stop or when you go in playback. In both cases, a very slight fade is applied. It's only for listening. It has not influence on the recording or export of audio files. Here, a simple example on a sample with a strong transient. With fading. Without fading. The same goes for the fade out, although I don't have a good sample for the purpose for you to hear. You can use this option, for example, to avoid tedious clicks with old uh, sound cards or interfaces with underperforming drivers. Reduce the CPU use of silent tracks during playback, experimental. It reduces CPU usage when the track has no audio during playback. Maybe because in that interval it has no active items. On this production PC, CPU usage is so small that it's difficult to show the effectiveness of this option. It has an entity that is equal to a simple fluctuation. On older and less performing machines, it could make your job more streamlined. Stop processing audio while warning of failed disk writes and disk fall. If activated, when the hard disk is full or important errors occur due to data corruption or disk problems, Reaper not only notifies you, but also stops processing the audio. I recommend keeping this option active as a useful troubleshooting tool. In the input channel mapping section, there are the options input channel name aliasing remapping and output channel name aliasing remapping. By clicking, you can rename all the inputs with your custom names, different from the standard one. Double click and I rename the channel one as left channel. The second I call it the right channel. I click on OK and activate the option. I go now to the inputs of the tracks and I find the name I assigned. The name is for the outputs, I'll show you. Out left, OK. Out right, OK. I activate the option and go into the hardware outputs, I find the name I assigned them out left and out right. You can of course save your custom settings in a file. Save and I call it map1. Resetting everything and wanting to record the settings, just click on load and record the previously saved file. All this serves to easy the identification of channels in a more complex installation than simple stereo one. I will now show you the installation I use in production, which is a more complex system where the nomenclature is that of Dolby Atmos. By inserting a track, I can easily select which channel to assign it to. Left, right, LFE, left surround, right surround, left side, right side, and so on. Show no standard stereo channel pairs. This option is active by default and allows you to have non-standard stereo channel pairs. So both standard and non-standard stereo pairs, 1 and 2 standard, 2 and 3 non-standard, 3 and 4 standard, and so on. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 are not standard pairs. By deactivating this option, you only have standard pairs. Default metronome output. The metronome signal, which you activate from the main toolbar, normally is routed to all outputs. By this setting, you can decide which channel of the sound card to send to, whether all channels or each single output. Let's see on the production installation. Here too, it's routed to all channels. but I can select any of the outputs instead. To let you hear it, I select the reroute outputs cause they are serving OBS, which I use for the screencast. Left channel selected. Rather than the right channel,
or assign any pair of available channels. Consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron or by giving a free offer. Below in the description box the links to do it. That's it for the moment. Thanks for watching.